Okay, right, well, within a couple of seconds. Here. <laughs> All right, so this is Rev 1 of the little Allen wrench adjuster for the action on the guitars that I'm building. And this is snake wood and a nice shape that I made by hand. And you can see it's cracked. And a couple of these have failed um, by rotating or, or these things are splitting. So I got a couple of revs here. Here's one I did uh, a few weeks ago, just as a trial. But these, these are viola pegs, viola tuning pegs that I, that I cut off. Um, and this one I thought was kind of clunky and I didn't like what I had to do to patch the hole that they already put in there. So I got a new kind, which doesn't have a hole in the ends and look actually really nice. And these are ebony, unlike this one, which is dyed rosewood. So I decided I'd try and figure out how to convert this um, to a better revision of this kind of idea. And so here's a couple of first prototypes or tests, and I'm pretty happy with them. Uh, I bought some nickel silver to make the ferrules. Of course, that'll keep them from splitting, unlike the original design, which doesn't have any provision for that. And um, I just broached uh, straight through with an eighth inch hexagonal brooch to make a nice hole for the Allen wrench. Um, Whereas on this one, I just, you know, figured out how to drill the right size hole and pressed it in and crossed my fingers that it wouldn't split. So anyhow, I think these are going to be forever. It's a much better thing. And so why don't we see about making one? So over here to the lathe, um, I have a piece of black Delrin and acetyl plastic. And in the end of it, I've reamed a hole so that I could press this viola peg into the tapered reamed hole. All right, so now it goes in the lathe. And I'm gonna take a turning tool set up for left hand. And get a cut on this. that for dimension. And then that's Okay, so that should be our final dimension of um, 250.
so there's our part. Okay. So this is a very long haul in ebony. And the first one I drilled, I used this short bit, barely long enough to get through really. It's solid carbide and I thought that it would uh, drill a nice straight hole, but, but it didn't, it wandered off center unacceptably. So then I tried this drill. This is an interesting tool. Um, this is a, it's called a half drill. And as you can see, there's no spiral to it. It's just a solid piece of material with um, a drill point on the end. And it's ground to one half the diameter, which in this case is one eighth of an inch. So anyway, it's a different kind of drill and it's designed to drill straight. There goes our air conditioner. drill with this drill and the problem with drilling with a small drill in a soft material like this it's soft but it also may have a hard spot or a wiggly grain that'll t tend to make the drill go sideways and, and and not drill straight as a result so what you want to do is try and figure out how to drill in a sensitive way so that you're not crowding the drill and getting uh, too much uh, heat and uh, too many uncleared chips. The uh, ebony is kind of gummy and tends to stick to the tool. So I put a nice amount of whey oil here on my tail saw. So I'm going to be dr drilling by, by pushing manually instead of with the lead screw. This screw will give you a feel for bigger cuts and bigger tools, but on a small thing like this, you just can't really feel what it's doing. So. We'll try this. So pushing off the chips with my thumb to make sure they don't build up in there and start creating friction and heat. It also gives me a chance every time to touch the tool and make sure it's not getting too hot. And too hot would be hot enough to turn the resins in the wood into a kind of a hot plastic. And uh, that would be bad because it would build up get big, lean on the tool, and uh, push it off center, which is the whole reason that we're using this drill, try and stay on center, and drill a nice straight hole. Now this is an ambitious thing to do in any material, in one shot with any drill, uh, because 
It's, uh, we're drilling a hole that's over an inch long, and the drill is only one eighth of an inch diameter. So it means we're going, well, it's actually probably more like 10 or 12 drill diameters, which is a challenging depth of hole in any material with any drill. Must be getting pretty close now. There we go. So let's have a look at what we got. And uh, gosh, that looks really nice. Looks pretty well centered. Looks pretty good. good. We're going to uh, broach the hole. And this is a uh, eighth inch hex broach, as we mentioned. So hexagonal shape, eighth of an inch across flats. And it has to be quite tight in there because we Believe it or not, we're going to apply quite a lot of force. And I'm trying to line up the flat of the uh, cutting tool with the axis of the knob, just doing it by eyeball, but see what we can do. Again, I'm going to feed, feed in like that. And then we tighten up the tail sock and just drive it in. So each tooth uh, is a little bit bigger. Um, takes another couple thousandths off. Ran out of adjustment on my tail stack. All right, now that this tool does not get withdrawn, you never back a brooch out. You want to just keep pushing it through. So. We'll push it through and it really cuts beautifully in this material. It's tight enough so that I won't be able to withdraw the brooch by hand. I need to push on it a little bit from this side with this pin. And that ought to do it. So now we have a nice hex hole, pretty well centered. So this is not perfect, but it's pretty good. And of course, uh, you got it to line up pretty well. You see that? So the flat is pretty close to the axis of the of the part. All right, so. Now the wooden part is done, and it's time to create a nickel silver bushing. So this is a decorative aspect, but more importantly, it's going to keep the, um, the material from splitting. And so we'll drill this for center with this sturdy little spotting drill. This particular alloy of nickel silver is uh, easy to machine. I'm going to use a drill that's 
a little bit smaller than the quarter inch hole that will ream. So, you see how nicely that drilled, I was able to go in Six hundred thousands on the first pass. Yeah, we'll, we're in about a, an inch and a quarter. We'll leave it at that. Going to slow the lid down and use a undersized quarter inch reamer so this is 249 thousandths gonna run it nice and slow so, yeah, just, just over an inch deep okay now I've got a form tool. So this is a tool with a little curve in it. You see this is a hollow shape here, which will form um, a convex barrel shape on our part. Oops. That's a nice speed range. Well, form tool is challenging because cutting a pretty big piece of chip all at once puts a big load on the front edge and it makes it want to, the tool want to jump up and down. So it's best to set the form tool a little bit low. Diameter is not critical, we just need a nice shape on there. I'm going to polish it with uh, a little 1500 grit sandpaper. And since the form tool is nicely polished, you can see that sandpaper brightens it up right away. I, I don't see any, any problems with this surface. Finish off with a little 4 old steel wall. That's, that's bright enough for me. <laughs> that's pretty nice. That's pretty good. Okay, so now... Yeah, how big this guy is. Let's look at that. Yeah, 276, so we'll make it 280. And uh, let's see. This grit is 37,000 wide, so 280. And we're going to 
press the end over there. Little chamfer. There's our part. And um, we have a little, well, it's a pretty big burr, but it's not very thick. And we have to get rid of that. So there it is. So I gotta just um, put a nice ball end on this end of the wrench and um, chop it off to length, drop a crazy glue and we're all set. New wrench.